Okay, computer, get ready to transport me to space paranoids. Here we go! That was quite an experience. Oh, greetings everybody. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince. And welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. And in case you're all wondering what happened earlier, I just got back from a mainframe computer system. And I gotta tell you, it was really thrilling in there. And as I was exploring, I thought that I should look into an 80s Disney movie that takes place in that system. Released on July 9th, 1982, the movie is Tron. So, on for the plot of the movie. When talented computer genius Kevin Flynn finds out that Ed Dillinger has been stealing his work, he tries to hack into the system. However, Flynn is transported into the digital world where he has to face off against Dillinger's computerized lightness, Commander Sark, and the imposing Master Control Program. Aided by Tron and Yori, Flynn becomes a freedom fighter for the opposed programs of the grid. So, what do I think of the movie? Well... Even though I first heard about it in this book, I never really saw it as a kid. But, after playing through the Space Paranoids level in Kingdom Hearts 2 and renting it from Netflix in 2006, I realized that this movie is a real futuristic hit. Well, mostly. But, to further explain why, Let's move on to Mustang Notes. The development of Tron began in 1976 when director Steven Lisberger became intrigued with the early video game Pong. He and producer Donald Kushner set up an animation studio to develop Tron with the intention of making it an animated movie. Indeed, to promote the studio itself, Liz Berger and his team created a 30-second animation featuring the first appearance of the title character. Eventually, Liz Berger decided to include live-action elements with both backlit and computer animation for the actual feature-length film. Various film studios had rejected the storyboards of the film before Walt Disney Productions agreed to finance and distribute Tron. There, backlit animation was finally combined with the computer animation and live action. Also, not only did this movie become a level in Kingdom Hearts 2, but it also got an Academy Award for technical achievements, as well as its own arcade game, which I discovered at the Starcade at Disneyland a while ago. A cameo appearance in Ralph Breaks the Internet. And it even got a sequel and an animated series. Plus, it even influenced a boss in Epic Mickey in the form of Pete Tronic. What I like about this movie are the visuals of the computer world. Okay, while it didn't leave too much of an impact on me at first, the visuals look absolutely breathtaking and futuristic. And my favorite scenes are the parts involving the light cycle games, the disc war battles, including the solar sailor 
and the final climax. Plus, the musical score by Wendy Carlos is really epic. However, I think the writing has a few hiccups, and the costumes don't really hold up to today's standards, in my opinion anyway. However, I know this is off subject, but while Encom did create the cyberspace world in the movie, in Kingdom Hearts 2, it was said that Anson the Wise copied this system and customized it for Radiant Garden maintenance and for his own private research. Ansem even modified Tron to protect the system. But, unfortunately, Terra, who was possessed by Master Xehanort at the time, brought back the MCP after Ansem the Wise was banished. And now, let's move on to the cast. Let's begin with Kevin Flynn played by Jeff Bridges, who got to be in The Last Unicorn, Surf's Up, Iron Man, and The Little Prince. Now, Flynn is a former programmer and game developer at NCOM and video arcade proprietor who was beamed into the NCOM mainframe while he was trying to hack into the MCP's memory. You know... I really like Flynn, not only because he owns his own arcade, but he's also a skilled video gamer and a genius hacker. Plus, he has some really unique functions while inside the computer system. Next we come to Tron, played by Bruce Boxlentner, who also plays Flynn's work partner, Alan Bradley, and of course, he reprised his role in Kingdom Hearts 2. Tron is a security program developed by Bradley to self-monitor communications between the MCP and the real world. To me, Tron is the best character in the entire movie, and, like in Kingdom Hearts 2, Tron is a noble, selfless being who will stop at nothing to fight for his friends and justice. However, Despite his sometimes serious exterior, he is shown to have a playful side to him. Next is Yori, played by Cindy Morgan, who also plays Bradley's co-worker and girlfriend, Dr. Laura Baines. Yori is an input-output program developed by Dr. Baines. She was in charge of the creation of digital simulations, like the Solar Sailors, and she was involved in the operation of the digitizing laser. You know, I think Yori is another memorable character, due to her sweet, endearing, and positive personality. Plus, she has a strong practical side and a deep loyalty to those she loves. We also have Dumont, played by Bernard Hughes, who also plays NCOM's co-founder, Dr. Walter Gibbs. Dumont is a guardian program developed by Dr. Gibbs to protect input-output junctions in the mainframe. This is Ed Dillinger, played by David Warner, who got to be in James Cameron's Titanic and he narrated Pooh's Grand Adventure. Dillinger is the Senior Executive Vice President of NCOM, and he's Flynn's former co-worker. He used the MCP to steal Flynn's work and pass it off as his own, earning himself a series of undeserved promotions. Next is Commander Sark, also played by David Warner. Sark is a command program developed by Dillinger to serve as the MCP's second-in-command. Not only does Sark do the MCP's bidding, but he also overviews the arrested programs and forces them to play life-threatening video games. 
at which the loser is immediately derest. Finally, we come to the Master Control Program, or MCP for short, voiced by David Warner. The MCP is a rogue artificial intelligence operating system, originally a chess program created by Dr. Gibbs and improved by Ed Dillinger, which monitors and controls NCOM's mainframe. However, as the film progresses, the MCP becomes so smart that it begins to expand beyond Dillinger's control by blackmailing him and intending to hack the Pentagon and the Kremlin to replace human control of the world. In my eyes, not only is the MCP a thrilling enemy to fight in Kingdom Hearts 2, but it's also highly intelligent, ruthless, failure intolerant, and highly defensive. And now let's move on to my final words. Overall, Tron is a great Disney film to come from the early 80s. The visuals are very futuristic, the music is epic, and the acting is is absolutely superb. Plus, there are some scenes that are really hardcore, mostly for folks who love video games or science fiction films. Still, to me, the writing and costumes still have some hiccups. But still, you could add this movie to those in the underrated category. And, of course, you should check it out especially if you've already played through Kingdom Hearts 2. As for my rating, I'll give this film an 82% out of 100. Well, that's all for now, but I'm not done yet. Be sure to join me next time as we look into Tron's sequel from 2010. Mustang Power.